scapula is obviously referring to your shoulder blades. That's like a dance move. Plan of action today, exact, exactly the same as the last session, but this time I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. What we're going to do. What we're doing. I'm back. This is Ryder, he's back. I'm back, like I never Due to left. popular request, yeah. sadly. Sorry. Shoulders and arms today, which is going to be fun, it's going to be exciting. Start, we're actually going to start with a side raise variation, but we can't, unfortunately, because uh, it's being used. So we're starting with our shoulder press, which is this. Big things here, grip. Talk about because a lot of people, I don't like pressing like so. Very uncomfortable for me. I'm talking about a scapular plane. There you go. So now oh I like pressing God. more in the scapular plane, which is 30 to 45 degrees in front of you with this neutral grip here. Feels like a bit, bit nicer on the delts for me. Bit nicer. I don't feel like you need to use you the scapular need to. plane. I think ultimately it comes down to you can press like so or like so, depending on whichever's most comfortable yeah. for you. There's nothing wrong with either. I think. In terms of leverages on the front delt, yeah, both planes yeah, are exactly the same. Exactly. They don't really make too much difference. Yeah, there's no difference in actual like but benefit I'm, to shoulders, yeah. but what there is a difference is in is. I've always found with me and any client, they are much more comfortable, I'd say, yeah. in that 45 degrees in the scale yeah, plane. I'm, I'm the same. Than being tucked out wide. I don't normally shoulder press. I'm not saying it's fake for the video, but. <laughs> Good. That was right. That was right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure where the working set's going to be. Two and a half, three. Hello. If you ever want to adjust the machine, by the way, it's normally a knobble back here. Up, down, up, down. Very good. So you don't need stress. Whenever I go to a gym, I always get really anxious about making sure I know how to adjust the machine. Then I don't use certain machines, yeah, even though I know say. how to do it. Took quite heavy today. Not gonna lie. Ooh. It's solid. It's got a good chest yesterday, I'm feeling a bit sore. Oh, see, I can't, I can't hack that. Yeah, struggling, struggling a bit. So basically, the plan of action for today is less questions, because I don't have any questions. More, he's talked his phone. <laughs> more explanation surrounding what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, or surrounding what we're doing and why we're doing it. Well, yeah, so we. So we today. So we. Uh, so basically, obviously, like I said, we're doing shoulder press variation at first, because shoulders are kind of a bit of a priority, hence why we train them first. And I typically don't like training arms earlier on in the session unless they're a massive weakness for me, which is at this stage they're not really. So considering this is like the biggest movement of the day, normally I said we would start with a Y raise just to kind of warm the shoulders up and get them prepped, but not able to do that today. So we're starting with shoulder press, which again, like I said, biggest movement of the day. So I kind of want to prioritize it. Just want to clarify that this set could get a little bit so a little bit spicy. Yeah, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. The gym music's really loud, I do apologize. So hopefully it doesn't like ruin it because the gym's quite loud today. Three, two, one. There we go. Good. Good. <clears throat> so you notice you're getting a little slight pause at the bottom there. Don't need one, but you can. I'm usually an advocate of it unless I'm getting really heavy then I bottle it because I get scared. Good. <clears throat> nice. Come on. One more at least. Good, drive, drive. Good. That's right. That's right. Five reps. And this obviously goes back to what I spoke about in the Whitney Houston video. I spoke about the five effective rep theory. Is that if we can only get a maximum of five effective reps per set, you don't need to do super high reps for hypertrophy. You can do them, just say so you don't need to. So hence why when we're doing big presses especially, and most movements in general, they usually hold between the five and 10 rep range. Again, don't need to, it's just preference. Because if you go too high or you do high reps, you're accumulating a lot more fatigue for the same result. So is it worth the trade-off? Probably not. It, again, but it's, it's preference. Depends on the movement as well. I kind of I mentioned in the previous video where we spoke about injuries, like I said, movement, all sorts of joint loading, things like that. Hello, mate. I do nearly every single press five. To yeah, I go, yeah, I'll go about five to eight. You know, Occasionally I'll go, I'll go heavier, but... It depends, it depends on the, on, on the feels. Yeah. Also, you'll notice the use of wrist wraps, which you'll see shortly. A bit of wrist support. Again, it's not going to make or break the movement, but sometimes a bit, a bit of additional wrist support can yeah. help how it feels. Broken wrist in three places doesn't help. That's probably not ideal. Yeah, it's right. Last week. Yeah, it's progress. One. Yeah, no, it's right actually. 
She didn't feel awful either. I reckon it might have been... Probably if I pushed one more, maybe. Maybe, yeah. That's maybe. all right, that's all right. No, that's good, no, that's real good. All right, as long as yeah, I do more than last week, that's all I care about. Write it down. Log book. Very important to know what you do. Otherwise you can't progress. We now have a caution sign because of this guy right here. After that first, that first video you saw, where the shoulder press on the floor, all the paperwork I like to fill out, this is it. We're gonna have two of these in the gym. Caution. Do not flip the machines. Yeah. What are we doing here? So we were meant to do this first, but we can't do this first because okay, it was... Get the shot. Hello, mate. But we couldn't because it was busy. Uh, so, so what we're doing... What, we're what? doing seated wine raisers. Seated wine raisers? Why are we doing it seated, Ryder? More stability. Yeah. And what does more stability mean? More weight. What does more weight mean? More Well, actually, tension. is it more weight or is it... It's, oh. it, could, it could, be, could be less weight on this, but more weight going through the target musculature, oh, yeah, 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 less yeah. weight being distributed through accessory muscles that we are not looking to target, like your lower back when you're swinging. Back support, similar to like a chest fly, where you're not pinning your scapula back, you're just sort of simply using it as a rest to yeah. support the scapula, not pin it, because obviously we yeah. want the scapula to move so we can get the lower trap involved. If the scapula doesn't move, you're going to have a bad time. Scapula is obviously referring to your shoulder blades. That's like a dance move. Well, it's, like, it's like I've got a personal trainer with me at all times. So you can see he's bringing his arms up into that Y position, hence why it's called a Y raise. Targeting the, the side delt in the shortened position, which a lot of movements don't do. You get a fully short side delt. And then with the scapula tipping up, you get a lot of lower trap involvement and stabilizing the scapula. That's hence why we normally do it before shoulder pressing, to get your scapula, your shoulder joint all ready and warm, ready for that big press. But today obviously wasn't free, so we just shoulder press first. And here he is, beating numbers from last week. <sighs> that was one up from last week, that's all I care about. Progressive overload. What? Match your beat. Beat by one. Oh, big moves. Cheers, mate. And that is, what is that? Progressive overload, mechanical tension. Need to adjust the cable machine. Either side usually has a little pin, as you can see here, a little pull it up pin. Pull, down, up, down, up to your preferred height. Make sure you hear that click. So the click? Yeah, hear that. That's when it's locked in, stable. If it doesn't click, it will fall and you'll probably hit your head. I've done that before. Your head? I was doing rope crunches, it went on back. Why were head. you training abs? Because I wanted to be shredded for the beach that I'm never going to take my top off at. Oh, yeah. I'm that guy. Go I, to the beach. I keep my top I on at the beach. Hate, I Hot take, I, hate, I, hate I don't the like the beach. Yeah. You go, you sit in the sand, you get sand it's, in It's hot, so you, miserable. It's hot. You, then you think, it looks go, good though. I'll cool off. Yeah, yeah. In this, in this, the water, you get in the water, cover yourself in salt. Then you're sat there, sandy, salty, hot. Miserable. All the drinks are all really expensive. Only good thing, fish and chips. I don't even like fish and chips that much. Hang on, but every time we go to the pub, you get fish and chips. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I like it. Every time you get a pub meal. Yeah, but it's just calories, isn't it? Oh. Also, I hate sand. I like how it looks. It looks really cool, but when sand gets yeah, in your socks... Yeah, I like taking pictures of the beach. I haven't been to a beach in six years. I'm still finding sand in my socks from 2017. <laughs> it's a true story. Oh, look at that. That's quite easy, actually. Very nice. You see how the elbow angle consistent. Don't say that. I'll mess it up now. It's pretty consistent. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be straight. It's wherever you feel most comfortable, which for me is personally is a slight bend, similar to Ryder. But whatever you choose, just make sure it's consistent. So it doesn't change drastically between reps. Or throughout the rep, I should say. Good. Good. Ugh. There you go, very nice. Go on again. Up. Yeah, that's alright. Oh, it burns. Oh, it hurts. Oh. I'm like, yeah, it's easy, it's easy. Yeah, it drops off. <laughs> tickle this, tickle this. It basically, if you're watching this, which probably no one is, but if you are. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know, maybe. Obviously, the growth guide is linked below, as per. Go on there, type in the discount code, code BEAN, B-E-A-N. Can you use that in a sentence, please? Yeah. <laughs> My cat is called Bean. There you go. Uh, and then you get 15% off. 15% off. So it only lasts until Monday. When Monday comes Flash around. Flash sale. Well, Do you make it really dramatic? Flash sale. Oh, no. Get go the growth away. guide. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> um, also, what we're going to include in growth guides in the future, Ooh. or what we're going to include in guides in the future, is when you go to community coaching, like the whole group coaching thing, there's also a private message board in there. So everyone who gets a guide or is part of the community coaching kind of environment will get access to like discounts and like secret things that aren't going to be like public knowledge. So for example, there'll be maybe discounts for merchandise when the clothing comes out, there'll be discounts to other guides. So for example, if you're part of community coaching, you may get like a standard 10% off growth guides in the future, something like that. So either way, they're all going to be intertwined. So growth guides, 
and coaching all will essentially get discounts off everything TFNL associated with that training programs, coaching stuff, and merchandise. Harry, what are we doing here? Biceps. <laughs> biceps. So basically what we're doing behind the back cable curls, so I'm obviously keeping my elbows slightly behind me, just so so. Technically working the biceps in their more lengthened position, which you don't actually need to do. I'm just doing it because I actually quite like this movement. And I think that's a big thing to remember that a lot of people neglect, is that enjoyment is a massive, massive, massive thing in training. Because obviously if you enjoy something, you're going to- Massive. Massive. If you enjoy something, you're actually going to stick to it. And if you stick to it, you're going to get good results from it, provided obviously you do it well. You choose the worst, like the movements you hate the most, if you're not going to do them, you're not going to get the results. So make sure you're choosing movements that align with your goals and movements that you actually enjoy. Well, I hate split squats, so I don't do them anymore. Gonna be honest with you, I probably should, but I don't. Ooh, that's quite hard. See this stable elbow, not moving, slightly behind the body. It's beautiful. These are the reps that matter. My eyes are still watering. <laughs> oh, I'm emotional. Hard? Okay, I'm gonna stand back here. Cause he can't see me, but you can see me. And that makes it really cool. So basically, like I said, you don't need to do movements in the lengthened position with the biceps. You genuinely don't. I think my favorite bicep movement is just a standing dumbbell curl. If I do that on the other day and I don't want to repeat, I try and avoid repeating exercises too often in the week, especially if I have the ability to, uh, to have variation in my program, which I do. But the, the key thing is, you know, see, is obviously, like he said to me earlier, he's keeping the elbows behind the body. He's not allowing them to pull, pull in front. It's really easy to pull those elbows in front. And we're trying to avoid that in this, uh, with this movement in particular. Good, good. He's not swinging. He's driving his glutes, holding them there. Good, good, good. That's nice. That's good stuff. We're doing some cross body tricep extensions. Why are we doing cross body tricep extensions? So basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to work the long, or place greater emphasis on the long head of the tricep, which is the, the big fat juicy head of the back of the arm there. That's and what we're doing. essentially, that, that makes up the majority of the tricep musculature. It's the largest head. So that makes up the majority of our tricep muscle. Yeah, which is, what, which is why we prioritize it. And ultimately, to do so, what we kind of need is like a, a, ideally a push down ball extension variation where you are kind of keeping the elbow slightly flared and in line or slightly behind the body so you can better line up the long head with its origin in the scapula, which means- which you've heard us mention before. Here we have. Uh, and basically when everyone says do overhead movements for the long head, not really a ting. Push down variations are probably gonna be better if you've got some good elbow flare. Overhead movements are gonna be pretty juicy for the lateral and medial heads, which are gonna be the two other heads of the tricep. Obviously tri meaning three, hence why there are three heads. That was a perfect explanation. There you go. That, that was, was beautiful. It's my job. So uh, all this is, this is heavy. So this is really heavy. Do you want me to pull one in so you can get- No, I'll be all right. Oh, okay. I'll just stand here. Oh, that's actually really heavy. I'll just stand here. Oh, that's actually really heavy. I'll stand here. <laughs> Oh, that's too heavy. Oh my God. So you will see, only extends, flared out about 30 to 40 degrees. So the long head is here, running down, and it's now more lengthened in that position, so it'll line up better in the scapula. And he's maintaining again, like with the bicycles, stationary elbow, not moving, it's all elbow extension. Then he does it really hard and it gets real slow because we need that slowing, involuntary slowing. This is the involuntary slowing. He's trying real hard, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. That is good. That <sighs> is where. That was really hard. That is where we get the mechanical kishni on. That really hurt my hands. That's the worst bit of it. Ah, my hands, look how sore they are. Oh, cheers, really appreciate the rubbing. Also, same as before, to adjust. With movements like this, I, I typically go quite high. I'd actually probably go a little bit lower. Yeah, so I was going to bring it down one. I was going. I should have brought it down one, but I just put it up there by default. Why are we bringing it down one? So I when you like see, when the arm is flared out to that 30 degree position, the cable, you can draw a straight line through the cable, through the arm. So your line of force and the line of... Pull. Line of pull are simultaneous. Yeah, basically what you want is your, your arm angle to align with the cable angle. I appreciate you. Okay. Appreciate you. That's right, mate. Ooh, it's a bit heavy. We'll be doing heavy. Good. Good, you see the big thing there is obviously he's maintaining a consistent flare, which is very nice. 
not allowing the elbow to shoot too far or too behind him. Keeping the, whatever elbow angle he chooses, he keeps it relatively consistent throughout the movement. Good. Go on, Ryder. Oh, we got there. Good. Push. Push, push, keep going. Keep going, keep going, don't lose position. Good, very nice. Reference earlier to involuntary, involuntary slowing of the contractile velocity essentially refers to when you're trying really, 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 really hard. But then and I was trying like really, really, really hard. hard. Regardless of how hard he's trying, he cannot make the, mo the movement go any faster through the concentric, which is obviously the working portion. Essentially, there's this big idea that time under tension is like a big thing. You really need to slow everything down and control. If time under tension, I mentioned this before in, I think actually in Monday's video, if time and tension was so relevant, then a 10 minute set would be the best set in the world. Yeah, because I, 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 could, I could now set this to number three and do three minutes of tricep extensions. It'd but if I don't get effective. to the point where I'm getting to those like four reps in yeah. reserve, pointless. Where if I could do a 30 second set where it's literally, I've instantly got five or six reps to the slowing point. I think if you ever go to the gym and you see an individual of any gender who's got a lot of muscle mass that trains really badly, and you think to yourself, how do they have so much muscle? How are they in such good shape, but even though they train really badly? Because more often than not, they actually just train really hard. And the That's biggest, why. And, the, and the, one of the biggest drivers of hypertrophy, probably arguably the biggest, is gonna be intensity. So you can do the worst movements in the world, but if you do them hard enough, you're probably gonna get pretty good results. If you do the best movements in the world, not to an adequate standard, you're not gonna get very good results. There's no so, point optimizing if you're not yeah. training hard. Whatever you're gonna do, make sure you enjoy it. And whatever you're gonna do, make sure you do it well enough and hard enough. That's why in the growth guide, the pyramid of importance, what's, the pyramid what's, of what's number one? It's, imp it's, intensity. it's intensity. We're in the dumbbell area. We're scattering around the gym, being an inconvenience, and we've been menaces. Double tripod, getting Look. in everyone's way, safely. Make sure we're trying to avoid people in the camera at all costs, because we feel bad and guilty, and we don't want anyone to get upset. What we're being mean? considerate, that's what we should be, at the gym, be the considerate. Gym, be considerate, gym etiquette, big so, thing. So basically what we're doing, back. leave the gym in a better, better position than when you found it. Oh, leave it looking cleaner than when you found it. Dumbbell hammer curls. Yes. I've done a bicep movement already early in the week. I do, I've done another, week? I did one, oh, I did, yeah, I, yeah. I see, sorry, yeah, and then obviously did yeah, another bicep movement earlier, so now we're going to a brachialis movement. We're obviously going to bring in the, dumb, uh, the biceps as well. This is going to be a bit more brachialis dominant, which is going to be a muscle underneath the biceps, and to do so we're going Give to maintain... juiced, thick look. do so we're going to maintain a neutral grip. Yeah, so hammer curl, not regular curl. Have you spoke about grips before on, on this channel? Uh, I can't remember. Like your supinated bicep curl, like you're holding a bowl of soup. I just it's palm to the ceiling, supinated, neutral, bowl neutral, of soup. overhand, so knuckle to the ceiling, pronated, done. Bowl of soup. That In works. the comments, they prefer the bowl of soup. The, the bowl of soup. Bowl of supinated. See, neutral grip the whole way. Again, elbow stationary. <laughs> Harry opts to curl across the body, not straight up. Ever Basically, so slightly. Huh, pardon? Ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. Basically just personal preference. There's no special reason. It's just predominantly what feels better to your joints. Yeah, I feels go a little bit more comfortable. Harry. I go the same with Harry as going across, but my elbow joints aren't very healthy. Whereas some people will rather just come straight up, but it's all about your personal anatomy. Oh, that was really hard. Oh, he's bringing me, you're bringing me my dumbbells. Oh my goodness, I'm going. Okay. I'm scared. Present for you. I want to clarify if the focus for whatever reason is really bad, it won't be for long because I think I'm going to get a new camera so I can film more in the gym videos and make this a bit of a regular thing every, probably every like two or three weeks because I actually really enjoy it. Good. Look at the control. That's the big thing, it's controlling the eccentric. I mentioned earlier how time and attention isn't really a bigger, as big a factor as people think it is but still maintaining good control through the eccentric portion of the movement, which is obviously the way down, is very important. <laughs> thing, the other thing to consider when you're controlling movements is you gotta make sure you're using the muscles you're actually looking to work and you're not swinging it. If you don't control, you may swing, bring in other muscles, reducing how effective the movement is for the muscles you're hoping to work. And also if you don't control it and you rush eccentric, you may injure yourself. The majority of injuries occur during and the eccentric portion of the And if you do ever get coached by Harry, or ever have been coached by Harry, you know how much he loves slow eccentrics. That's all you ever say. So, Hi, mate. Slow it down, slow it down. Slowly eccentric and a little bit slower, a little bit slower. You should rude to me. Come. See you in a bit, homie. Good, 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 good to see you, big man. <laughs> <laughs> He's is a that, menace. Is that the most additional, is that the biggest thing you could add? A sniff, smell me. <laughs> you <laughs> can catch about. all of my sets live, like live, live. On TikTok. On TikTok. What's my name on TikTok? I don't Coach know. Coach by Rider. Maybe Coach by Rider. Coach by Rider. You, you, you're fine. Um, so I'm also going to get back in the habit of uploading. I don't know why I'm down here. We do. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. I don't know why. It's just habit now. Uh, again, more in the habit of uploading more stuff to YouTube Shorts, TikTok, and stuff. In the next coming weeks, I just want to make sure that what I am uploading 
is going to be less repurposed videos and more original content. Or like clips from this that you may not have seen on YouTube or like really good repurposed bits. You'll see, you'll see what I mean. So that's going to be occurring. Um, so what you're saying is they're going to get two or three videos a week plus original new Original, YouTube crazy. Shorts. I just need to invest more time into editing stuff now, which is going to take a long time. Particular plug always, uh, community coaching is obviously linked down below in the description. I've Have heard you can get at home plans and at home. gym plans. It's crazy. That, oh, and they're updated by, by you. On a weekly basis. On a weekly basis. It's crazy, isn't it? And, and I'm on that. Access to a whole community. Oh, the whole community. It basically it's basically got like. Sorry? Oh, it's cheaper like, than Netflix. It's cheaper oh. than your Netflix subscription, and the first week is free. And you also swap programs. If you, if you don't do the home one and decide you want to go to, uh, go to the gym, you can swap over. Love they, it. You can, I've, I've actually even heard you can even vote for what you want. Oh, yeah, in the next block. You want, you, want, you want more arms? You want to do a bro split? You want to, you want to hit arms five days a week? Let us know. I'm going to hire you as a marketing it's crazy. manager. You see, right into the I, um, coming soon. You see it? Yeah, in there, there's a message board so we can all talk, which I'm on no. there every day. And there's every also, day. yeah, I right. hop in every day just see if there's anything I've missed and talk to people. people. You can comment on your session, say what was good, what was bad, then I can get involved and give you some advice, give you some bits of bobs. So it's very much a community driven, interactive means so and affordable means Netflix. of coaching. Less than Netflix, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm not saying cancel your Netflix because I'm probably not as fun to watch as Netflix. I don't have as much content. I but think, consider it. Depending on what you're watching on Netflix, you might be more fun than Netflix. Well, I don't know about that. Hi, everyone. I'm back. I don't know. How's it going? Katie, great question. What are we doing here? My belly's about to fall you know out. What are we doing here? Do you want me to tell you what we're doing here? What we're doing here? They, those are my cats, by the way. I just want to let you know. Oh, thank you, you so much. You might have to come a bit closer. I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Thanks so much for the loving support on, on my cats when they're on his channel because I read all your comments. Thanks so much. Also, follow um, my cat's Instagram account. Right. I don't know what it'll be about. To post it. Thanks, bye. I want to clarify before anyone asks, Katie's not my girlfriend, she's literally just my housemate. I'm his housemate, we just live together, but he also loves my cats. And then on another note, dumbbell skull crushers. <laughs> Biting the lengthened position of the tricep. A bit more emphasis on the medial and lateral head because of the overhead adopted position. I personally can't do these because it hurts my elbow. Harry told me to grow up. But <coughs> It hurts. That was really heavy. So essentially one of the big things people do when they do any kind of skull crush or overhead variation is they try and keep their elbows really close to the body. Ideally you actually want to flare into the natural position which is going to be in the scapular plane. Again, better lines up the triceps with the scapula and also you're going to find it, I hate you, Flight you're going to find it much Please easier land the and here. you're going to find it much easier to go through the desired and adequate range of motion for the target musculature. And again, I'm going to say it again, elbow stationary, not not, not flapping around, just elbow extension. Work the muscles, not the, not the movement. Oh. He's sliding up the bench. Hope you don't mind me touching, sir. He's sliding up the bench. He's I can planted say, on worry. the seat so he can get a bit higher up. Gets a bit stretch position at the bottom. It also means that he's not going to bang the bench on the way down. See this? Natural flare of the elbows, very nice. Working that length position. So for that reason, we're actually pausing in the stretch position there to then place greater emphasis on that length of position and spend more time in that prioritized position. Is that long enough? Yeah, that's good enough. That's, 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 a, that's a long time. Good. Again, as he comes up, his elbows aren't shooting forward, which is a really common mistake people make. I'm not doing don't this. Do that. Yeah, mm. don't do that. Obviously, every bench is going to be different, so you may have to adjust it differently. These benches. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, bring it in, bring it in, sir. Oh, jump in, jump in. You good? I'm good, mate. How are you? Touch it. We train. Why is it a bit late for you? What's going on? Everything okay? Yeah, good. Mandeep like, has been on the channel before. In has the it? background, because I've known Mandeep for five, yeah, six I years. Like, Mandeep, I feel like you need to say hello, hello to the I camera. Met, I met Mandeep the year after we started the channel. Lay flat, pull it up. Low incline, pull it up. High incline. Pull it up higher, shoulder press. It's not even on. Oh, shoulder press. Lay it flat. Front bit. Lay it flat. Low incline. Juiced incline. So basically, that, that's essentially the session. The priority of every session when we go into it is just trying to do a little bit more than we did the previous week. Extra rep, extra kilo, whatever it may be. It's doing something better than the previous week. Is that always gonna happen? Probably not, but you can try your best. But as long as you are aiming for that, yeah. if you don't get that, your intensity will be adequate enough to... Yeah, it, it's about boost. maintaining mechanical tension, which is obviously basically gonna be referenced to maintaining intensity. Hopefully that video provided some kind of insight into how to set up certain bits of equipment. Again, depending on the equipment your gym has, most of them are quite similar. So for example, the shoulder press, most shoulder press are gonna have a seated pad that you can move up and down. Where the pin is, is, is depending on the machine, obviously. Hopefully that also taught you a bit about what to do and why we're doing it as well. 
and also hopefully showed you a, a kind of what I would say adequate intensity look like. I so I would say quite hard. Yeah, no, I think we should, like it, everything we do is usually anywhere from the zero to two reps of reserve. So yeah. either unless you're at the start of like a, a block, then we might do three or four. But it, we kind of hover around the zero to two reps of reserve, reserve mark. I'd say everything we did today was within that range. Yeah, I think so. You can probably do a lot more than you think you can do, especially when it comes to leg training. And I think the next one of these I do is going to be a leg day. And also, I hope it shows you that the gym is not that scary. If we can walk around with two tripods, looking talking, silly. talking to a camera with a microphone on, looking silly. not that scary. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't know something, just ask. If you don't know how to just shoulder press, find someone and ask them. I think most people are going to be quite approachable in the gym, yeah. despite what they... But from a member of staff, yeah. they always help Yeah, you. staff always going to be helpful. But I think realistically, it, depending on the gym you go to, obviously, I think everyone's there for the same reason and they just want to do better, be that for their sport, be that for their health, whatever it may be. There's always a mutual element of respect that the people just want to improve. I feel like if you go there with the idea of like, you're willing to ask for help when you need it, which I think is easier said than done, I think it kind of highlights that the, the barriers that have been maybe put in place psychologically maybe don't necessarily need to be there. And hopefully your gym is a thriving community that encourages people mm. to work together and help each other. Even I ask questions, you ask me questions, yeah, I we ask, ask questions. questions. Each other. Sometimes I'll, I'll go up to someone and I'm like, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, and I've same. been doing quite a while and I'm like, so sometimes, sometimes I, I really need a bit of help. And sometimes I see kids doing some stuff which I think could be better and sometimes I just say to them, have you ever tried this? And they either want to listen to you or they don't. But either way, I think, and then they, it's when I said earlier about leaving the gym in a better state than you found it, that's not just physically, like regarding that how it looks, but I think that's also kind of, to an extent, emotionally, where you're leaving pe people, they'll come into a gym in a better way. Like Even if them. it's just as simple as like a little smile at someone. Yeah, you, Someone you, might be looking real anxious in the gym, they might be real scared to be there, you just give them a little smile and a nod. Yeah, do you know much thing on about? Yeah. Not it's just, it's just so if they come in in a, in a bad mood, you help them leave in a better mood. Be that you've helped them with their training, you've greeted them, you've done whatever. You, you've just done something that has left whatever you found or whoever you've come across in a better position than when you found them. Next one will be a leg day. Don't know when Ooh. or where I'm going to do that. Ooh. Probably in the next two or three weeks. Don't you want me there? Should I come? <laughs> you can't. Well, do you, you don't have to be. Maybe I'll come. But we're, I'm definitely going to make in the gym series and like filming stuff like this uh, much more of um, a thing on the channel. So probably every two or three weeks, depending. But I do want to get them churned out. And hopefully next time I do want to have a better camera, which is going to be cool. Thanks for tolerating Ryder. Thanks for tolerating Katie talking about her cats. And thanks for tolerating how pale I am in the video.